Hi, Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. Thank you so much for joining in today. And I just want to start by saying like ginormous gratitude that it was part of a conversation I had with a business coach recently who was saying like, what do you want to create? Where do you see yourself? Six months, one year. Don't know about you. Not my favorite question generally. Not how I operate, right? But it did, there were a lot of ideas I have. I think this is a really important time. Every spiritual entrepreneur I know who's doing so well in their lives has a really clear gift that they've been disseminating and has been received is being up leveled in a really exhausting way interesting way, curious way, and they know that all these gifts that have been here in their spiritual circles are being called forward to marry what it is they do and be out in the world. Just saying. And here mama is too. And one of the words I used amongst many of what I'm creating is awards. I have been doing, gosh, I've been in entertainment since I'm a little, little girl. And the radio podcast thing, the speaking on stage, the red carpet interviews, the writing the books, and teaching people to do all of this, I've been doing for 12 years. So I felt it was time, since I teach visibility and using your voice, for mine to receive recognition, not for me, for all of you to continue to receive this at a higher level and to invite in those who don't yet know Dare to Dream exists, and I know guffaw, who could think that's possible? But yet, for those out there who don't yet know, there's a home for you to create your dreams. There's a home for the number one transformation conversation. There's a home to meet people like my amazing guest today. This is your home, welcome home. So Dare to Dream has 12 hours after I spoke that, been nominated for two People Choices Awards. One is in entertainment and the other is in the People's Choice Award, the overall award, I'm gonna ask you to go vote. If you would please, it is free. All you do is register. They send you a code to make sure you're human. You click on the code to get back in and it's a drop down menu. So you must look for Dare to Dream. And it is at podcastawards.com. If you want the full Monty, it's podcastawards.com slash app slash nominations. Again, it's the People Choice Podcast Awards. And we want more people to find this and get the support at a time when you are so invited to receive the support that you might require to be all that you came here to be. And boy, do I believe in you. I want to thank Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for supporting the show, for sponsoring the show. We adore you. And they do great work, great healing, energy work all across the world. So go check them out. They have beautiful products, books. They have programs all around the world in every language, and they also have online stuff. So anywhere you are, you can join in. And you can subscribe to the show through Apple, through Google Podcasts, through Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, BBS Radio, Radio Public, Player FM, iHeartRadio, and much, much more. Be sure to leave a five-star review. That also helps for people to find this number one conversation for transformation. So my guest today is here to talk about that subject is your, which is about how can you have a life that you just love, that waking up every day is like a major pleasure, fully empowered, fully self-expressed. Well, John Jacob Mubarak is the assistant director of Rhythmia Life Advancement Center, a medically licensed life transforming luxury resort and it's located in Costa Rica. I myself will be going there, as I've been telling you, October 12th through the 19th, yes. And so I'm called to do this and be this, so please join me. If you can come those dates, fantastic. You are so welcome. And if you can't, you're welcome. You're welcome to choose the dates that work for you, just come, it's time, right? And this is an amazing place because they've got health specialists, specialists they've got spiritual teachers, they've got shamans, everybody is working together to create something very integrative and majorly up-leveling for you. As far as I'm concerned, if you've been someone who's been seeking healing, if you've been healed and you're ready for even more, if you're someone who just loves, loves leaving behind the shackles that keep you back, but you're ready to progress forward in a big, awesome, happy, easy way, this is the way. Also, John Jacob 
is a licensed practitioner at Agape International Spiritual Center, located maybe a mile from where I am. So he is super close by part of the time. He's in California, and part of the time he is in Costa Rica. And we're here to talk a little bit about the experience of sacred plant medicine. And he's going to offer insight on that and also on some umbilical cord stem cell therapy, which I'm a total nerd about, so I'm looking forward to. If this is already in your cough, you're feeling this, 877-829-9379. Call that number for Rhythmia or go to rhythmia.link slash Dashinger. Check it out. They'll know you came through me and they're going to treat you like the god and goddess that you are. And John Jacob, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Do you prefer John Jacob or do you prefer JJ? You know, I, I go by both. I, I really don't have a preference. Um, uh, my spiritual teacher, Michael Bernard Beckwith, said, John Jacob Mubarak is a strong mm. name. It's your name. You should have it. But you know, those people dear to me uh, call me JJ, and I like both. So I'm, I'm good either way. That's awesome. Okay. So maybe we will be fluid with that. I also like John Jacob. I think that's got power. I see what's behind you, so I must ask, are you there right now? Are you at Rhythmia in Costa Rica while we speak? I am. I'm in beautiful Juanacaste, Costa Rica, on the property of Rhythmia. Our guest speaker this week is... Michael Bernard Beckwith. Um, mm. So it has just been a high-powered, high-powered week. We're sold out this week. And um, so much transformation, so much healing is going on. So yes, I'm gratefully here at our center in uh, Costa Rica. What is a day like for you while you're there, while you're working? Sun comes up, you wake up, alarm, no alarm. How does your day unfold working there? Thank you. So um, here at Rhythmia, you are, you know, we're, we're an all-inclusive resort. So you're really here, right? The intention is that you're here for a week retreat. And my day starts uh, around 4.30 in the morning. Um, I get up and, uh, well, yeah, 4.30, I'm up between 4.30 and 4.40, and I sit for meditation at 5. Mm -hmm. um, I meditate from 5 to 6, and then at 6 o'clock, I go out and, um, and move, some sort of movement. And Costa Rica is so beautiful to be in the plants, in the trees, in the nature, uh, the vibrance, this garden of Eden. So I work out outside um, mm. and we have a beautiful gym here inside and there's outside equipment. And so, um, you know, I, I work out for an hour and move and then I come to Roots, which is our, our uh, dining room and people are waking up from, uh, from the night they've been in ceremony the night before there's a yoga class going on and i usually post myself up in the dining room and uh and talk to people about their journey how was last night some people are you know had an amazing transformational experience other people were releasing some things mm -hmm. that they we're working through so i spend some time in the morning talking to guests and then come back to uh, my little casita get ready for the day and then it's meetings or you know projects and and being with guests and um, stem cells and classes teaching classes it just sort of unfolds the the beautiful thing about this work that i get to do here is that it uses all of me um so i i have you know been the food and beverage director at different hotels and run restaurants and run international import export businesses that's not a uh, euphemism for drugs it was <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't you know el chapo okay <laughs> uh, i worked in the petroleum industry importing naphtha into mexico uh, i taught industrial engineering um, in guadalajara and english so uh i guess what i'm i'm trying to say is um that that all of the things that brought me here to this moment here in this property i get to speak teach, use my spiritual training with Reverend Michael to walk this path of healing with people every day, use my business um, background, my hotel and restaurant management background, my Spanish background, my international business background, all being brought to bear uh, in this amazing opportunity that Spirit has put in front of me to live the life that I love. And did you say music background? No, I, I mean, I, I Amateur. Uh, I, I've sung in choirs and played instruments all my life, but but not nothing professional. 
okay. I was like, wow, this is, this is really a Renaissance man. I'm, I'm impressed enough. You could have stopped, you know, five sentences ago. Yeah. Well, you bring up the name of somebody. I'm, I'm such a, a mad for Michael Bernard Beckwith. I mean, he's been on the show three times and I've interviewed him on the red carpet. And of course I go to Agape now and then. And, and I'm, I'm just mad for him. I think he is so special and so beautifully built for this time and our, our needs and our voices. And so the fact that you, you're sort of a descendant of him is, is very special. And I think it's so beautiful that even though you're there now and he's often here, that you guys still, as he comes often to the center, that you get to continue your journey with him. What is that like when you reconnect? It, it, it's so wonderful. He is my teacher, um, and uh, and to be in his presence. He he was working with people yesterday in class. Um, you know, frequently at Rhythmia, there's morning metaphysical classes that are our regular classes, and then in the afternoon we usually have a guest speaker that that does some classes. And you know, to watch this man, people were, you know, people are realizing long seated abuse that they've suppressed or repressed. And it's coming up, and this is big stuff. Mm. And, to, and, and they're raw, they're vulnerable. They've, they've gone through a ceremony or two, and it's all brought to the surface, and it's all right there. And he, to watch the way he works with people, holding them in love, but also with just the right amount of ability to dig a little deeper, to not give up, to not let them off the hook, but do it in a loving manner. So I'm constantly learning from this man and his teachings and the words just flow out of him so beautifully. So to reconnect with him is, um, it's like reconnecting with family and the whole community. Uh, he brings Reverend Kathleen McNamara, uh, who is the uh, head of the Agape Practitioner Corps, um, Lee Simran Brown, who is the executive director of his office, mm -hmm. two practitioners um, that come with him uh, as well, and so we come together, and it's it's you know we've been together for years and years, so it's like family, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's just a joy. It's a joy. I'm continuously learning. How did you meet Jerry? Did you meet Jerry, the owner who runs Rhythmia, through your own experience personally? So, uh, this is a great example of how um, we don't have to figure out figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, we're all looking for the next iteration of our life, right? So. At this time, I used to be the sales, oh, another thing I used to do, I was the sales manager for a yacht company in Marina del Rey oh. and, uh, um, for 10 years. And, and while I was there, um, I started studying with Reverend Michael and, and began studying as a spiritual practitioner, which is a four-year licensing program. It's, it's no joke. It's a serious program. So as I finished my study with, with uh, Reverend Michael and was getting licensed and sat for my orals and boards and licensure and all of those things, um, I was started to think, how am I going to transition out of a lucrative position as a you know sales manager for this this yacht company, and and not lose the abundance in which I live. So like like most of us would do, I started thinking, well, how am I going to you know figure this out? Well, if I if I want to be a practitioner and see clients, which is like a spiritual counselor, um, I got to get an office and I got to see so many clients a week and I got to charge this much a session and da 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 da. And I start going down that path, how to transition out of one career to another. And out of the blue, a friend of mine called. I mean, of course, I knew about Lithmia, but it wasn't on my radar like to come work with him. Um, and I got a call out of the blue from a friend of mine who was working at the stem cell clinic. He said, um, look, we've got this, this stem cell procedure here. It's really beautiful. We need somebody to come help sell it. But they can't just be a you know, slimy salesperson. We need somebody that's sort of spiritual. We need a spiritual salesperson. And I thought, well, if anybody was prepared for that, that would be me. So um, I came down and watch how spirit moves. Mm -hmm. uh, my boss, who is a beautiful man, my boss at the, the yacht company, but very meat and potatoes, don't give me any of this spiritual woo-woo stuff, right? You know, I say to him, look, I, I'm, I'm considering moving to Costa Rica, and um, I'd like to take a couple of weeks and go, go down and check this out. And he said... I hope you go down there and you hate it and you come back and work for me for the rest of your life. But I want to make sure that you're happy. So why don't you take the third 
for the fourth quarter off. Go down there and make sure it's right for you. And guess what? I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you to go down and make sure it's right. Um, you'll keep your salary. And at any time that you want to come back in that quarter, you can come back. Talk about a spirit supporting me. So I was able to transition with ease and grace, mm -hmm. came down and started running the stem cell clinic here. And it was at that time that I met Jerry. And then over the course of just sort of focusing on the stem cells, um, he then said, hey, I, I see a greater opportunity for us to work together and offered me the position as the assistant director. And what that looks like is I replace Jerry when he has to go away on business or for personal issues, I come down and run the retreat, walk the spiritual path with people, teach classes, mm -hmm. and, um, and run the resort, the, the physical plant maintenance and daily running of the business. And then when he's down here, I run our corporate offices up in Malibu. So that's how I met Jerry. Amazing. <laughs> that really is getting out of the way for the divine to come in and direct your life. Um, and how beautiful that your boss gave you that kind of space to make a choice, fully supported financially and otherwise. That's, that's really a great story. This wasn't a guy who, this isn't a spiritual guy, right? This mm -hmm. isn't the open, you know, kumbaya, let me, you know, um, circulate and make sure. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't think he's ever done that. He's been in business for 30 years. I don't think he's ever done that so this is when 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 it says you know spirit moves in mysterious ways like life supports us and when 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 we're in alignment with something um uh unforeseen assistances and unexpected good comes from unexpected places in unexpected ways right and and uh, and but when we try and figure it out we're getting in the way that's right? right the how the how is in our business let the how be the wow we just have, to, just have to know our intention, a clear intention, right? And that intention is what um, interfaces with the creative medium and allows something unexpected to unfold. Mm. Mm -mm. All right. Well, people who come down, who have not had this experience before and maybe have not had the experience specifically with rhythmia, that, so they get involved with what we're calling a ceremony and it involves a shamanic plant medicine. And I understand that there becomes, once it's drunk, there becomes a relationship, so to speak, with the, with the medicine. How do we best listen to the medicine? How can we be open to hear what it's telling us, guiding us, showing us? Yes, beautiful question. So I believe in pan consciousness. I believe that there's a consciousness to everything, mm -hmm. right? And we look to science for this truth. The first law of thermodynamics says energy is neither created nor destroyed, but transferred or conveyed into different forms. John, so I'm, I'm going to ask you just to get a little closer to your mic. Sure. Thanks. So that, that, that uh, energy is neither created nor destroyed, but transferred and conveyed into various forms. Einstein's special theory of relativity says E equals MC squared. E is energy. M is mass or matter. And they're on different sides of an equal sign. That means energy is matter. Taking those two scientific principles, we can say that there's an energy and a vibration to everything, that, that the chair you're sitting in is just slowed, stored energy, the same energy that's animating you, whether it's animate or inanimate. So then from that place, I can say I believe in pan consciousness, that there's an energetic consciousness to everything. This medicine has a consciousness. It is part of that singular energy. When we ingest this, it's not showing us anything it is, it is simply showing us ourselves. Here's what happens. We each have so many aspects, so many facets. There's our mental body, our spiritual body, our emotional body. There's our ego. There's our subconscious, our unconscious. You know, we need a bus just to get you up to the temple for ceremony, right? Well, when we drink this medicine, it all, everything gets drunk except our soul, right? Oh. And that still small voice that we all hear that's neither still nor small, we just generally ignore it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's always guiding us. I've heard it and, de and definitely said, mm, no, I'm doing something else, right? So when you drink the medicine, that still small voice that, that usually gets swallowed up with all of the cacophony of our ego and all the other subtle bodies, they're all drunk and for the first time we hear our soul. And that's the medicine. 
That's what it's doing. It's allowing us, it's a sacred mirror that reflects and reveals the things within us that are seeking to be healed. Oh my God. I just had such a strong like moment when you said that, which is because the words you were using. And I suddenly felt like when you describe it like that, it is almost like we are drunk during our waking time, so much so that we've numbed out the voice that's yes. actually trying to communicate with us. And when we drink the shamanic plant medicine, the reverse happens. That yeah. sobers up and is actually has the presence to be able to finally show us, talk to us, communicate, and we now have the presence and we're out of our own way to listen. That's exactly it. And sometimes, um, you know, the, the medicine has a high vibration. This plant is a very high vibratory frequency. And the law of, of entrainment, in, in physics, there's a law of entrainment that says higher vibratory entities will not lower to a lower vibration, but will raise the lower to the higher. So the plant medicine has a high vibration. When we drink it, those things that are within us that are lower vibratory frequencies, fear, doubt, worry, not enoughness, um, all of those things that, that, that you know, limited thought, right? That must go. It either has to rise up or be removed. And so the, the first process of the medicine so that we can really hear ourselves is we begin to purge, right? Mm -hmm. We either shake or cry or laugh or yawn or sweat or puke or right something has to be released because if, it, if it's not going to vibrate it has to go and once we remove these blocks right that's the process of the medicine is up leveling us so that anything that no longer serves us goes and now we're vibrating at the frequency of the medicine and we can now hear and see the voice of the divine within us that's always speaking to us Wow, okay, that just cleared something big up. And so along these lines, I know it said that it's good to sometimes have an idea. Okay, there's a couple of issues I'd like to address that I'm gonna come down with. Perhaps I'll write down these issues and we may walk into the ceremony, but what about what, about what we actually focus on? Because I under also understand the element of no expectation. That is very interesting dichotomy. So let's say, we go in, we have some idea, yeah, I'd like to handle this and this, it's pervasive in my life, and yet the plan shows us something completely different that has nothing to do with how we even entered the ceremony or what we wanted to address. So talk about that. What would that scenario be like? Well, there's a couple of things that you, it's a great question, there's a couple of things to unpack there. Mm -hmm. The first is that, um, that uh, at Rhythmia, we have, group intentions, right? People come with lots of things they want to work on. When we say plant medicine done wrong answers every question. Why? Oh. Right? But plant oh. medicine done right eliminates the questions. Right? Ex so, can you explain that? What do you mean? So, That's so big. You know, a lot of times we're like, well, is this the right job for me? Is Jim the right guy for me is, you know, well, all of these things, right? Well, okay, if Jim's not, who is? Bob, well, where's Bob? Bob's in Florida, where in Florida? Miami, okay, you know, like, it'll answer all these questions, right? The answer is within you, um, and, but, but you've wasted this whole precious uh, sacred time on these questions, whereas we're not wanting to know whether working at, um, you know, Bear Stern or whatever is the right, you know, Merrill Lynch is the right job, but, but when, you, when you are in line with your soul, when you are in tune with the infinite, there's a deep knowing, and there are no more questions because you know, this is for me, that's not for me. There's just, it's, there's clarity. So plant medicine eliminates all of the minutia of is this right, should I do that, should I do, should I not? No, I know what I need to do, I know where I wanna go, I know who I am, that resonates with me. That doesn't resonate with me. That, that's the clarity that's provided in plant medicine. So we, we, we have three intentions. The first intention is show me who I've become, right? Show me who I've become as a result of the split that occurred mm. from some trauma, right? And the trauma could be, I didn't get fed on time, or it could be something really big like you know abuse. But 
it's by design that we split. And we split to protect ourselves from, from uh, because, because our needs weren't met. We need to get our needs met. And it serves us for a time. But, but after a while, we, we're playing a character, we're playing a role. And, 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 and we frequently feel like, I'm no longer satisfied with this. I'm not satisfied with this job, with this life, with this relationship, with whatever. So we want to see who we've become as a result of that split. Once we can see who we've become, the role that we've been playing in life, and it's based on a fundamental lie that we're not enough, then we can merge back to a sense of wholeness. We can merge back with our soul. When we're merged with our soul, finally we're hearing the voice of the divine. We're hearing the voice, the voice of our own higher self for the first time. Perfect clarity. Mm. And then we can heal ourselves, heal the, the heart, heal the, the unforgiveness. So, so that's the intention of ceremony, that we eliminate the questions. Um, now, th there, was, there was another part of, of what you were talking about, which is... Um, you know, wanting to get these answers, right? And intentionality is the key. So we, we, we state these intentions and then allow, allow the medicine to work because the medicine wants us to merge back with our soul, but it's not gonna merge back until we can see what the fundamental lie that we've been telling ourselves is. So we gotta see what that keystone lie is. And this is why people leave here in a week transformed. I just did a, a, a Another, my, my own uh, talk on the healing that occurred on Tuesday night. People are saying, I drank this medicine. I released 30 years of trauma and abuse. I forgave my abuser and I am free, free from this, free from the past, free to, to soar. You know, um, people are forgiving the unforgivable, falling in love with themselves, um, healing themselves. And, and then by, by that, um, but by in healing themselves, they're healing their relationships. They're healing their work environment. They're healing their family, right? Because they're healing themselves. I think I answered the question. Very, very, very well. And so if this is true and that occurs while they're there, and I know you have a 96 percentile rate, so let's just talk about that because that's so huge. Guess who come, report, 96% of them say, yeah, my life completely changed by virtue of coming here and doing this. Even more outstanding is months and months and months, months later, you check back in, they report the same. Let's talk about that report. So once people leave Rhythmia, and they've already had this profound change, does the change continue once they leave? Beautiful. So yes, the, the, the statistic is uh, a moving statistic because we keep this data from inception, from the day we open to today. So as of today, the miracle rate is 94.86% cumulative. So awesome. we've had over 5,500 people here. So out of that 90, almost 95% of those people have said, I received my miracle. Um, and that miracle is I saw who I've become, I merged with my soul, and I healed my heart. And th that's upon us, an exit survey. But you know, People go to seminars and retreats all the time, and day three, I got it, this is great, and then a week later, it's gone. Uh -huh. so, right? <laughs> Six months later, when we check in with people, 97.5% of those people that said they got their miracle say that this was the week that changed their lives. So it, 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 it's not undone, right? You can't, un, you can't, uh, you can't undo it. It's, it's a permanent change. Um, we can take on some old, old habits and things like that, but, um, but, the, but this merger is yours forever. Hmm. Why four? Why when people come for their week stay at this luxury resort, do they receive four ceremonies? So everything that's done here was really given to Jerry um, by the moon, right? He did his own journey. He was at a breaking point in his life, suicidal, uh, uh, deeply addicted to drugs and uh, multiple drugs. And, uh, Alcohol, women. Uh, yeah, the whole thing. I read the book. <laughs> Bad guy, right? You know, <laughs> he says he had the kind of energy where he could walk into a CVS and just piss people off by standing in line. You know. <laughs> Why is she so, so different now? Yeah, oh, I know. Uh, so he, when he had his journey, um, he received this 
guidance that said, you're going to buy a place in Costa Rica and only light workers and light warriors are going to come there. Right. And, and he followed this guidance. And then he did another four, you know, 200 journeys asking the questions and everything that's here was directly a revelation and an insight from, from ceremony. So that's why we have the uh, ozonated cleanses here. So you're doing a, a colonic with ozone water. You're doing um, yoga and meditation and breath work and farm the table meals and you know walks to the beach and metaphysical classes and four ceremonies, right? So it's all been given to him through insight and revelation in his own uh, uh, spiritual journeys and 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 inquisition and inquiries. And and how you you mentioned going to roots after you've done your meditation and your, your physical movement, when you're ready to connect with people, they're just waking up after their ceremonies, they're eating at the farm to table restaurant, you talk to them about their ceremony. Are there other ways that you connect with the Rhythmia guests and you serve as a spiritual counselor? Yes, well, you know, I, I sometimes teach classes here, um, but really the beautiful thing about this is you're, you're, it's, you're in, not only myself, we have this amazing holistic team. These people, I'm so amazed and impressed with them. They are mm. selfless, right? So there's this whole team here to support you. Not just a few people, but a really high ratio of guests to staff. And the staff are here to support you in this journey. So um, we're connecting at Roots. We're connecting at the pool. We're connecting in yoga. We're connecting, you know, all through the week in classes. Um, it's, it's this beautiful space where people are, are in, you know, it's a retreat, right? You, you retreat to move forward, right? You're taking time out of the busy goings and comings of our day in order to, to settle and to, um, to contemplate. And so we're here in that process with them. I'm going to take a very quick break and we'll be back with more and I'll be asking JJ about universal principles which is something that he teaches and I'd love to know more about and besides going to the People Choice Awards for the podcast or podcastawards.com I also invite you to patreon.com slash dare to dream this show is a place and a space where I feature very successful cutting edge leaders who are doing the amazing work opening the doors for all of us. And of course, the show necessitates quite a bit to keep it running business wise and behind the scenes. So if you're moved, if you're ready to live a big, bold life, if you are ready to do whatever it is you're called to do and know that you cannot fail, it's the math, it's, as they say, you actually cannot fail. Then go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. You can donate. You can donate a dollar. You can donate more. Just don't have a cup of coffee one day or pretend you're buying someone and donate to dare to dream. And I see everything that comes through. It actually makes a really huge difference. And I thank you for that and for all your encouraging comments. This is dare to dream radio. I'm Debbie Dashinger and I am interviewing John Jacob Mubarak. He is from Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. And if you are interested in this awakening, this spiritual awakening that he's discussing, and the place that facilitates medically licensed facilitates plant medicine journey, which is, by the way, why I'm only going there, because I'm still a virgin. But that for me, uh, I need to be held if I'm going to be opening myself at that level. Absolutely get your reservations here. Where you, here's where you want to go. It's rhythmia.link slash dashinger. I kind of like the sound of that. Rhythmia.link slash dashinger. Or you can call and always use Dare to Dream. And that would be 877-829-9379. So I do want to go there and ask you, John Jacob, about your studies, your journeys, that you've come to know that there are universal principles that govern our life. Can you share a little bit about what those universal principles are? Absolutely. Um, so universal principle is the, 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 
the backbone of new thought teaching, new thought ancient wisdom. And we can see these principles throughout the wisdom traditions of the ages. Um, you know, one principle is that we live in a expansive universe, right? Or that the universe is fundamentally good, right? And you could say, well, how is that possible? That's not a universal principle. I mean, look at all the bad things that are happening in the universe, right? Um, but when we anchor into universal principle, this truth is true all the time. They are principles that govern our lives. And when we can anchor into them, they provide us with a deep and fundamental understanding and up-leveling to overcome the vicissitudes of life. For example, um, when I say that life is good, that the universe is good, or God is good, right? Whatever, whichever you want to use. And when we speak of God, we're not talking about some, you know, anthropomorphized person in the sky. We're talking about a presence yeah. um, that is never absent, that is everywhere in its fullness, um, that is the consciousness, the wisdom, the intelligence, the creativity, the fundamental energy and the vibrance of the universe. This is the presence of God. So is when, when the presence is good or the universe is fundamentally good, how do we know that? We know it because life doesn't contradict itself. Love is the lodestone of life. Love is the um, principle that the universe is loving. Why? Because, if it, because we know love builds. We know love creates and hate destroys. If somebody is hateful, you can see it. They grow old faster. They out illness out pictures quicker. You know, this is, the, the, you can see the destruction that hate wreaks, uh, you know, the havoc that it wreaks out in the world. Love builds. The universe is constructive. The universe is progressive. It is expanding. And if it wasn't, nothing could be. So these universal principles um, that, that uh, another principle is that uh, God is omniscient, omnipotent, all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful, and all-active, that it's the only activity. These are principles that we can anchor into and know that if life is good, always, no matter what the appearances are, then there's always something good seeking to emerge. Let me just amplify that a little bit more. Yeah. So imagine that you're on the ground during a hurricane, mm -hmm. right? Chaos. Wind is blowing, sea walls, water, you know, it's chaotic and dangerous, right? And now you're 30,000 feet above in a plane. And you can look down at the ground and you can start to see some order emerge. You can see there's a, a grid to the streets and the houses are in rows and orderly. You can see that there's, you know, neighborhoods. And you can start to see some order. Even though on the ground, it's crazy. And now you're on a satellite and you're looking down at the earth and you see something almost beautiful, the swirl of the hurricane, the weather pattern, the white and the blue, and there's beauty and harmony and balance, right? But all of it is happening at the same time. It's all happening now. There's chaos, there's order, there's harmony. And so when we anchor in principle, it helps us to lift our minds above confusion, no matter what is happening in our current circumstance, to see the truth, the order, that the universe is ordered, that the universe is loving, that the universe is balanced and harmonious. So we're not saying that the experiences that we're having in life, chaos, trauma, hurt, that we're not saying they're not real. We're not saying to suppress them or bypass them, but their unreality lies in our interpretation of them. And so anchoring in spiritual principle then helps us to lift our minds above confusion and see the truth no matter what is in our circumstance and our appearance. And when we do that, we transform. We can see the invisible. We can, and this is Reverend Michael. We can see the invisible. We can hear the inaudible. And we can do the impossible. Oof. Does that um, make sense? Oh my God, it does. Completely, beautifully explained how can people actually make that connection to spirit in such a way that they supersede that and merge those three aspects? So it's a constant, you know, constant, constant um, growth, right? And, and we, the beautiful thing about a principle like God is love or these, these 
ancient and esoteric mystical truths, mm -hmm. right? It's in the Kabbalah, it's in the Hermetic rites, it's, it's in Hinduism, it's in Judaism, it's in Islam, it's in Catholicism, it's all, every, every, you know, every one of these great wisdom traditions has that truth in it, God is love, mm -hmm. right? And, but that simple phrase it is accessible, on, has multiple access points. So the person that hears it for the first time has a certain understanding of it. And hearing it for the thousands, thousandth time, you have a different understanding. So you begin where you are. You start where you are. And there's an interest, there's a curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you start by finding a spiritual community. You start by sacred study. You start by serving. You start by meditation and prayer. You start where you are. And these principles deepen because they are, you can enter at a beginning level and then there's always more. So it's, the, it's this beginning process. Just start where you are. JJ, what did you learn from, I'm assuming you took um, some of grandmother's medicine yourself at least once. And I'm, I'm assuming you might have had some kind of shift happen, some kind of new awareness. Do you mind to share what you learned about yourself? Oh my goodness, I would be so grateful. In fact, um, I just shared this on my uh, on Facebook Live recently. I journeyed last Tuesday, just a couple days ago. Okay. And, um, you know, as much I've been in the I've been studying with Reverend Michael for 10 years I'm, I'm still a newbie there's many people that have studied much longer than me but but I've, I've achieved a certain level of understanding of these principles and even so you know this is eternal there's always more we're never we've never it's never that there's a place to get right it's it's always more to unfold so I'll share this and be very vulnerable with you uh, and say that I was having these experiences where I go have a beautiful expansive experience with somebody, share, talk, and then later that day, hours later, I might be alone at home and I would start with self-doubt, self-judgment. Oh my God, I can't believe I said that. Did I say that? Oh. Start comparing myself. Um, fear would come in, this deep insecurity, you know, and people see me as, Oh, this beautiful, I'm always happy. And they go, oh, I wish I had your energy and you're just so buoyant. And, and it's such a, a wonderful thing. But then, you know, we all have those moments of deep self-doubt. We're human, you know? So here I was in this moment of contraction, literally curled up on my bed. After this beautiful, expansive experience one night, I was out to dinner with friends and then, you know, I was at home later and going, oh, I can't believe I said that. Oh my God, what are they thinking? I want, you know, just awful, awful self-doubt. And so I said, I want to go to ceremony. And I set the intention. I said, I, I want to know what this insecurity has to teach me. One, heal me at the highest level so that I can speak from my authentic self. That was my intention. So I went into ceremony and I drank the medicine. And I began to, you know, the first thing you start, you get something in your body, right? You start to feel something move, you might feel nauseous, you might, you know, feel some twitching. And, you know, there's something happening in the body, right? Begin to feel that. Then what we call a pinta, right? You start to see sacred geometry. You start to see shapes and colors and beautiful patterns. You're seeing the unified field is what you're seeing. You're seeing the, that, that unified field behind on the other side of the veil, right? You're trying to glimpse what's more than what we can simply touch with our you know, five senses. And, and then in the process, I began to, to, there was like a sacred psychic surgery. There was a release. There was some energy moving through me. And a lot of times in medicine, it doesn't make sense, right? Sometimes you see a clear vision, Sometimes what you're seeing doesn't make sense, but it's all a prescription just for us because it's al allowing us to get clarity around our intention. So in this medicine, I began to move. My body was moving. I was feeling energy. Um, I could feel this psychic surgery. There was something being removed from me, something. And I, I was purging, but not vomiting i was yawning i was breathing out a shaking in my body so this time i'm releasing something and 
um, I went to one of the shaman and I had a beautiful blessing. They'll, they'll use uh, shindu, which is a, a mixture of herbs and, and um, flowers from the jungle that changes the energy. It's like, it's like reorganizing your energy. When you're, having, uh, when you're releasing something, you need to be cleaned. Right? So they clean you. Right? And, and they had this beautiful healing. Mm -hmm. And I began to step into this nobility. Like I began to feel this sense of dignity. Right? Instead of it's contracted, I'm not good enough, and oh my God, what did I say? And what are they going to think of me? It was like, I am John Jacob Mubarak, and I am authentic. And I just had this, and I walked out to the fire, because we have a fire going outside, and the loka is beautiful, and surrounded by trees, and there's hammocks, and you can see the moon and the stars in Costa Rica are magnificent. So I go outside and I'm just one with life, one with love, it's bliss. You know, I've had this expression, this purging, and, and now I'm, I'm in this state of like, I am, I am that which thou art, and thou art that which I am. I'm one with life, one with power, one with dignity, one with my, I'm in my spiritual authority, and people are looking at me like I just descended from you know, the mount, you know? They're going, oh my God, and I'm feeling this dignity. So I'm loving this sense of personal power, not an egoic structure, but a like, oh my God, so humble, so at one with life, with love, with beauty, with creativity, with excellence, with joy, with power, and feeling that nobility, the right, which is each of ours, right? We are sons and daughters of the most high, and feeling that, like nothing to shrink from. I thought that was enough, right? But wait, there's more. Right? Uh, 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 <laughs> so great. Comes and I go outside and I'm looking at the stars and just in love with life in this moment and the trees and, and all of a sudden, six years ago, I divorced uh, my husband and, um, and I, I, I thought I had forgiven him, right? We, we both did stuff, right? It, it, it wasn't all one-sided, you know. I'm, I'm going to claim that. But, uh, but I thought mm. I was done with that. It's been six years. I've done all this work. And suddenly something came up and I realized that while I wasn't holding grudges against him and I didn't want anything bad to happen to him, I also wasn't really wanting the best for him, right? right? That's true forgiveness. When I can say, I want the best for you. You know, because I was like, I'm glad you're not, you know, living on the street, but I'm glad I'm doing better than you. <laughs> but I really got to the point, and it's, that wasn't my intention, but I forgave him and I said, I love you. I'm so grateful for all the lessons that you taught me, and I want the best for you. That was so, so I released insecurity. I stepped into my spiritual nobility and dignity. I forgave something that I didn't even know that I needed to forgive. And I released sorrow that I didn't even know that I had. And, oh my God, that was such a profound ceremony. You know, I walked out and I, I just knew that I had released something that had been with me for a long time. Um, one other thing that really came, that insecurity, that comparison, uh, is is a darkness. It's a not enoughness and it's lack. And the spirit is never lacking. The spirit is always abundant. So I was also able to look at the darkness and not push it away, but to, I ate it. Mm. I welcomed it and I transmuted it. I brought all the darkness, all the fear, all the self-criticism, all the self-doubt, all the worry. And I said, come on. And I brought it within me and it transformed. And, and because the lightness and the dark are the same to me, right? This is the biblical phrase. Uh, it was one in one of the Psalms. And, and, uh, and so I was able to trans transform that darkness, and not to shun it, not to suppress it, but to invite it in and make it part of me. And, and it is now, uh, there was a transformation there and, and it became my full light body, you know, and a huge expansion occurred. That was Tuesday. That's a Tuesday night at Rhythmia. <laughs> oh and I'm oh telling you, it wasn't just me, but then people are sharing, releasing 30 years of trauma, people 
forgiving their parents, forgiving their perpetrators, people falling in love with themselves, healing, healing, physical illnesses, um, psychological disorders. I mean, people are just sharing. It's just a Tuesday night. <laughs> oh my goodness that was a great story i'm beyond the beyonds listening to that and i really feel you in all the pieces that you so vulnerably shared and thank you for trusting us with your story and for allowing us to see the before what happened during and the possibility of the after i can viscerally feel that and and have there's pieces in my life I can really relate to what you're saying. So if that's what's possible, like Mama Mia, and I just want to speak to what you're saying, because I, I really appreciate how much you're sharing here, because I'm starting to have an understanding, without even having drunk or done this, I'm starting to have an understanding. And all I can tell you is when I started this, even conversation with Gerard and Brandy and Rhythmia, my knowing this i'm supposed to do this was a heck yes i knew i was 100 percent in my nerves were also <laughs> about the same amount and now as you're my third conversation i've had dr jeff gerard powell and now you jj and i'm like oh i am feeling so at peace with this mm -hmm. and because i've done different work and i don't even know how possible it is that it's alike, but I have had moments of profundity doing something completely different, and it's been a long time. But when I did, and because I think for my being, it spoke so well to me, I was literally able to go into the matrix of the situation, see the black gook that created it, uh, make a choice to discreate, see literally all the threads that came out from that one choice or belief. And coming back out, of course, uh, by the way, I have to add putting into the no thing, because now there's a nothing there, right? I've just discreated something, putting in what I prefer. And what I can say is coming back out here that all those threads, you think it's a one belief that you made one time, it has affected an entire life everywhere and to see all that yarn just gone and relationships are changed and i'm changed and how i view everything so when you're saying this and it actually sounds like what i'm describing on acid in the best way that you could have that and to forgive that is no joke a relationship of that magnitude what it can inform every other relationship with another man, a potential other marriage, uh, you know, with friends in your life, with yourself, with your God, all of that. Like, I so get that. And besides past lives that you may have had with this individual, that is such a repairment. And I mean, I think that's the true meaning of at one atonement, right? You atone yeah. to become one with again. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You're so right. This this process, um, and there's there's so many ways to get there, right? There's there's meditation and breath work, and um, and really we're all doing this in death, right? You know that people that are at the end of their lives all of a sudden forgive the unforgivable. Mm -hmm. They start. It's the process. They see who they've become. They merge back to a state of oneness and they heal themselves so they can transition, right? The opportunity with the plant medicine is that it's it's the quickening. Right, mm -hmm. meditation is beautiful, and I, I'm a firm believer in meditation. I'm going to use all the tools I can. I'm going to use meditation. I'm going to use sacred study. I'm going to use breath work. I'm going to use um, healing my body with, with good whole foods. I'm going to use um, I'm going to use stem cells. I'm going to use anything I can to help me support my physical, mental, and emotional well-being so that I can live my purpose on this life in this life. And the, the, the plant medicine is the quickening of that. I mean, you know, we, we tell a story here of a guy, one of, the, one of the biggest, you know, you talked about healing past lives. One of the biggest things that can happen on plant medicine is what's called a nada, right? And, and you, it, it, it's, it's, you drink the medicine, you, you kind of yawn, you lay down and go to sleep, and you wake up at the end and the shaman goes, ceremony's over. And you're like, oh, oh my God, what? 
<laughs> and it was, it, this shit didn't work. <laughs> what happened? But the Colombians, 5,000 year tradition in the Colombian tradition says that a nada is a, a very special, sacred, sacred moment because the, 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 the Colombian tradition believes that we come in, uh, we come into this form uh, on two lines. There's our karmic line, all of our past lives and, and our karmic tradition. And then there's our, our family lineage, our DNA, our genetic mm. heritage. We come in on these two strands and, and take form in this dimension. And that the medicine assesses you, right? And sees that somewhere back on one of those lineages, many lifetimes ago, some trauma that's so severe uh, it, it must be healed. And in its magnanimity, it allows you to sleep so that you don't have to go through that healing. So a nada is the sign of a, of a really special healing. So we tell a story at Rhythmia, of the man who got nothing. <laughs> and, uh, and this guy had been working on a trauma. He was 50 years old, he came here, and he, um, he'd been working on this problem since he was 15. 35 years he's been trying to figure this out. And this was like one of his last resorts. We get a lot of people that are like, I was gonna kill myself and this is my last shot, I'm coming. You know, this is a really sacred place. Um, so he comes, drinks the medicine. I see him the next day. And uh, how you doing? He goes, no, nah, not so good. I said, well, what's going on? He goes, I don't think it worked. I said, what, what do you mean it didn't work? He goes, well, I drank the medicine and I went to bed and woke up. End of the ceremony, nothing happened. I didn't feel anything. I said, oh, I'm almost sorry to hear that. He said, but don't worry. I figured it out myself. <laughs> like, 35 years, you've been working on this. You drank the medicine one night and that's the night. Suddenly the next day you figured it out yourself. No, this was, that's a nada. That's a true nada. Something was healed so far back that he, he, he'd been struggling with it all of his life and, and something happened in that ceremony. And the hallmark of a nada is a clarity. You feel great the next day. You're clear and pristine. So, so um, those, that's the kind of, as you mentioned, those like healings way back. That's just one of the, one of the hallmarks of, of, of one of the types of experiences you can have. They're very rare. One in a thousand people get a real nada. No kidding. Oh that's my goodness. That's sacred, so sacred. good to clear up because you do hear about that and you wonder, oh, you know, what, what happens then? But I, I like that it's actually a special thing that can happen. And folks, by the way, if you're listening to this conversation going, okay, where, where do I call? Where do I go? Again, John Jacob Mubarak, who is the assistant director at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. If you want reservations, I'll give you the phone number. I'll also give you the website. The website is rhythmia.link slash dashinger. Rhythmia.link slash dashinger. The phone number 877-829-9379. And gosh, so much to cover, so little time. Let me ask you this. This is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams or goals? Oh, wow. So, so much is happening here at Rhythmia and in this unfolding with, with Jerry. You know, Jerry's walking such a profound path. Mm. Um, Great. Really amazing. So I'm so excited to walk this path with Jerry. My purpose that I really saw in my studies of Reverend Michael is threefold. I first saw that the only thing that really excites me is my own spiritual growth and development. And then to walk that path with others. And then the third thing is bigger than I could imagine. And, and, and it's scary because spirit said, you need to be in service to an idea of a world that works for the best and highest individual and collective good. Mm. How the hell am I gonna do that, <laughs> right? So when you're saying, what's, what's the next dream? How can I be in service to this grand idea? Um, I, I, and what's so beautiful about working with Jerry is it dovetails so nicely. I get to speak and teach here. I get to meet thought leaders from all over the world who are profound people. I get to go on podcasts with amazing people like you. You know, this is, this is the growth and expansion of, of community. And I myself um, uh, love doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. It's just so so profound and healing. I love speaking and teaching and doing workshops. So I'm seeing that, that I can serve Rhythmia. 
I can serve um, people here. I can walk the path of spiritual growth and development on my own because I'm drinking medicine myself. I'm meditating. I'm praying. I'm doing the movement. I'm doing everything that I need to. Um, and the further expansion and growth in terms of speaking and teaching and being fully self-expressed, being fully used by the spirit, right? Fully used. I want to be used up because the worst thing that could happen at the end of my life is to say, I could have given a little bit more and I missed out on this opportunity. So that's, that's my dream. That's so beautiful. I am going to end this show with a quote from you, actually. But I feel very moved to ask you if you don't mind quickly to pray us out of the oh, show. That would be would, an honor to receive. Oh my goodness, thank you. Mm. So just jumping to center in this moment mm. with such gratitude for this beautiful conversation, for Debbie and her open-hearted willingness to share and, and her intention for assisting people in their dreams, her willingness and her yes, for everything is contained within our willingness and our yes. I'm so grateful for this life, for this day, for this opportunity to live, for this opportunity, for another shot at living our purpose. I anchor into the truth that there's one source and one power and one life. It is my life, it is Debbie's life, it is each one listening to our voice, all the same, one life, one source, one power, and we are one with it. We can't be separate from it. We are one with all of life, one with the love, one with the beauty, one with the joy, one with the energy and the creativity and the abundance. Knowing that now our minds are lifted above confusion, I can say for each one that each one in the sound of my voice is walking in tune with the sunshine of life, with the unerring harmony, order, and balance of the universe, that life is supporting them, that each one hearing my voice knows that they are loved and supported beyond imagination, that everything is working together for their good. We now know that there's a spiritual truth of their being at the center of each one's being is a perfection the perfect idea of God and that perfect idea of the spiritual body we now endeavor to associate with their physical body knowing that there's a dynamic healing in every organ action and function of their body that it comes into alignment with the truth of their being one with God one with life one with wholeness that the wholeness and perfection that is the center of everything expresses an outpours overflowing the banks of their awareness so that their physical body is healed their emotional body is healed their mental body is healed that the the whole body of their affairs comes into this alignment with the oneness of life, emotional oneness, love, and God out picture as, as relationships and love and community that, that endears us to each other and that this love and light of God enfolds each one of us, wraps us in its love, and the power of God goes before each one, making the crooked ways smooth and the bumpy ways straight. I am so grateful to speak this word, speaking a word of blessing for Debbie as she lives her purpose, that her body is a fit instrument so that she can live her grand purpose, being in service to life, and for each one of us to find that thing that is the true expression of ourselves. I'm so grateful to speak this word so grateful for this opportunity. I rejoice in its completion. I give thanks in its fulfillment. And if you are in vibrational harmony and agreement with me, you can join me in saying, and so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Ah, my goodness, this was beautiful. And I am going to still end with JJ's quote because why not have more sumptuousness on this <laughs> table today? And these are his words. You deserve to live the life that you love. You are here to wake up to your divine purpose. When you're in alignment with your higher purpose, you will find peace of mind, health of body, wisdom, understanding, love, and an abundant supply of all things necessary to meet every want without making any of those things the object of your existence. Next week on Dare to Dream radio and podcast, I'm featuring Christian Minson, who's a spiritual life coach, speaker, and author, and Christian is the resident director of the Breathwork program at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. Remember, subscribe to Dare to Dream. It will come right into your inbox every week. And also, if you'd like to see this, if you're listening to the podcast or radio show, you can actually see myself and the guest and go to youtube.com slash 
Deb on the radio or youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Remember to allow the bigness of everything we've been talking today to become your reality. You're here for so much good and the world is just waiting for you.